Back pain is common. In fact, 80% of the population will experience an episode of significant back pain at some stage in their life, pain that stops them from working or performing their normal tasks. Having said this, 90% of episodes of pain get better by themselves, usually in a few days, or are taken care of with simple measures such as anti-inflammatories, physical therapy, and activity modification. Pain usually resolves within six to 12 weeks. And it's been shown that return or maintaining normal activity during episodes of pain, even if this activity is modified, will result in you getting better quicker than if you just rest in bed. Statistically, of all the people who have episodes of back pain, only around 10% end up seeing a specialist. And of those who see a specialist, only around 10% end up having surgery to treat their problem. The fact is a very small percentage of the population who has back pain are likely to be helped by having an operation. It is also important to remember that there are multiple causes of back pain. And just because someone you know may have had similar pain to yours and had an operation or certain treatments, does not mean you need surgery or the same treatment for your back pain. There is also a lot you can do yourself to reduce the chance of having episodes of pain and to speed up your recovery and help prevent the pain from returning. Maintaining a healthy weight and good support in the muscles in the back and around your belly are important ways to help protect your back. And while these activities will not change the way your x-rays look or prevent you from having back pain at any stage in the future, there is good evidence to show that it will decrease both the severity and frequency of episodes of pain. Another point to remember is that every surgery we perform causes some harm to the body, like scarring or altered function and mobility. And any operation is associated with risk. And these risks must be balanced against the potential benefits. And in just about every situation, surgery should be considered a last resort. Your surgeon will discuss the nature of the risks associated with your treatment. Now let's discuss some causes of back pain. All pain is conveyed by the nervous system to the brain. This does not mean the nerve is being compressed or damaged. Structures that are inflamed, degenerating, broken, or just wearing out may lead to pain. And this pain is often worse with movement or activity. When a nerve is compressed, pain usually follows the path of that nerve, down the buttock and down the leg. This sort of pain will cause sciatica, and it will often continue even if you are sitting or lying down. However, maintaining certain positions may lead to relief of the pain, at least temporarily. The treatment for leg pain caused by nerve compression or sciatica will be discussed in a separate video. There are several structures that can lead to pain in the back, buttocks or extending down the legs. One of these is the discs that lie between the vertebrae. Facet joints can also lead to the sort of pain. And these are small joints in the back of the spine, a bit like the joints we have in our hands or our feet that help provide stability and guide movement. Another structure causing pain in the back, buttocks and legs are the nerves in the spinal canal and they come out between the vertebrae. In addition, the muscles and tendons that attach to the spine and the vertebrae themselves may be responsible for your pain. Lastly, irritation of what we call the dorsal root ganglion, which is like a junction box for the nerves that sends impulses back to the brain, may lead to what we call dysesthesia or a burning pain or a sensation like ants crawling on your legs. Keep in mind that just because you have wear and tear or degenerative changes related to aging does not mean that these changes we see on your x-rays or MRI are responsible for your pain. Unfortunately, there are no x-rays, MRIs or CT scans that will identify exactly where your pain comes from. To diagnose where your pain is coming from, your specialist will ask you questions about where you feel pain, what aggravates it, and what you do to make it feel better, as well as how it limits your activities and sleep. We may also request injections, either to help diagnose the cause of the pain or to relieve the symptoms. We may also suggest a course of therapy, particularly if you think your pain will get better by itself without surgery or injections. For some conditions, it may be a requirement of your insurance to undergo certain treatments before they will approve surgery or injections. These treatments investigations and procedures can help us to be sure that your pain will not improve by itself and help us to know what is causing your pain and what the appropriate treatment may be. When back pain is due to degeneration of the discs or joints and does not get better with appropriate non-operative treatments over a period of at least three months, we may consider surgery to address this pain. However, surgical options are limited and we generally suggest surgery only when the cause of the pain is clear the potential benefits of surgery far outweigh the risks. 
Unfortunately, there is no way to wind back the clock and return degenerative discs to how they were years ago. This is despite what you may hear in the media or reading magazines about treatments such as stem cell injections. At present, there is no evidence to show these cells have any effect on slowing and certainly not reversing the degenerative process. The most important single factor that contributes to the way we age and the way discs and joints in our back wear out is our genetic makeup. Then what we do throughout our lives, from sporting activities as children, the work we do as adults, and any accidents or injuries we sustain along the way, may accelerate the process of degeneration. But there is no treatment we know of that will slow it down. Even back surgery to treat certain problems may lead to additional stresses being placed on adjacent levels that speed up the degenerative process. Therefore, this is another factor to consider when thinking about undergoing back surgery and may influence the type of surgery recommended in your case. So what options are there if pain persists? For degenerative back pain, there are really only two surgical options. That's disc replacement and fusion. We will discuss what these surgical options are and when they may be indicated in a separate video.